This is Carson Anderson and his crew from Perry, Georgia. This is footage of their pecan harvest. That's right, pecan harvest. Pecan is a nut. Some people say pecan. Pecan, pecan is something you find in an older deer blind. You see there's no facilities in the woods, hence a pecan. <laughs> pecan also sounds like some sort of uh, tropical bird. You remember Toucan Sam? That genetically altered abomination that was a mascot for Fruit Blue cereal. There he's always running around saying, hey kids, follow your nose, follow your nose. Uh, the pecan industry should use Pecan Sam. They could have a mascot and he could say, follow your, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's not the best idea when I think about it. I wonder what the pecan mascot is. I mean, I assume it's a nut or maybe a pie. Whatever it is, I bet it could kick the shell out of Mr. Peanut. <laughs> the shell out of Mr. Peanut. Mr. Peanut walking around with his smug top hat and his monocle. Whoever wears a monocle. Actually, you remember they killed off Mr. Peanut? <laughs> the craft company. Apparently, they had enough of their anthropomorphical nutty spokesman. I'm assuming he was a little salty about that. <laughs> You remember? He was driving down the mountain and he swerved to miss an armadillo of all things. And then they all went off the cliff and they were hanging by a tree and Mr. Peanut sacrificed himself. That's right. The craft company killed off Mr. Peanut. <laughs> Consequently, he was only two weeks from retirement. I guess Kraft didn't want to pay the pension on that old boy. <laughs> then they buried him and the lagoon bloomed into a baby Mr. Peanut. He had his own wee little hat, his wee little monocle. They were trying to go all scrappy do on us. And now don't even get me started on that little punk scrappy do. I couldn't stand that little brat. It's the worst thing Scooby Doo. I mean, you take Scooby Doo, it's a great cartoon. Oh, let's ruin it by putting some little punk in there, some little scrappy dappy do. Worst thing they ever did. Worst thing Kraft ever did was kill Mr. Peanut. <laughs> Nevertheless, this footage is pretty cool. I mean, see, what they do here first is they shake the nuts off the tree with that violent shaker. That's awesome. And then they windrow it, which simply means they put it all in a row. Then they have that collector. I don't know what it's called. I'm going to say a nut collector because, honestly, it's fun to say. This is super neat. Even for a farmer like me who harvests corn and soybean all day long, to see them harvest pecans, this is fantastic. Now, I'm a corn and soybean farmer, and I love seeing all the pictures of the planters of corn, soybeans, even wheat. But these air seeders up in Canada, those things are awesome. They're so huge. It's like a city of just moving. <laughs> it's like you need 80 acres to turn the thing around. This is phenomenal. Uh, well, that's one way to empty a silo, I guess. <laughs> Boy, things are really getting crazy to get all the corn out of a silo at these high prices. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing that adds test weight like good old concrete. <laughs> it's almost like the Lifesaver packages where you got to rip off the layers and you keep going down. This week's machinery pick of the week is presented by John Deere. Look at these cookies. Look at these cookies that Katie Putnam from Iowa makes from scratch. Look at them. Ooh, so yummy. <laughs> if you were wondering, uh, the green ones do taste better. The red ones taste like repair. <laughs> repair and lack of horsepower. Uh, what's that saying about putting lipstick on a pig? <laughs> Look at this little fella hamming it up. What if it tastes like bacon? This pig does look confused. It's like he's enjoying it, but he's kind of afraid she's going to put an apple in his mouth. <laughs> All of a sudden, a bunch of guys are signing up to work at a pig farm. <laughs> well, nothing goes better with graham crackers and milk, I guess. <laughs> that happened really quickly. It's almost like this video is a Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> I remember when our son was little, uh, Grandma would say, only take one cookie, because God is watching. When he came out of the kitchen with an entire uh, box of graham crackers, 
He just looked at me and he said, don't worry, Dad. God's only watching the cookies. <laughs> That was uncalled for. He goes, well, that was uncalled for. <laughs> I, it depends on if you're the cow or not. I mean, you call down the thunder, now you got it. That was from Tombstone, which it was the best movie ever. I've watched it like a hundred times. I think my wife, M has a crush on Wyatt Earp. So I, I guess I can't blame her. Meet Wyatt and Doc. They're livestock guardian dogs, and obviously they're pretty good at what they do. Mandy from Wild Oak Farm says she would trust the farm with them. This is so different from my dog, my yellow lab Sammy. She spends 90% of her life thinking about killing the squirrel in our front yard. That's what she does. The moment she wakes up, she goes there on the corner of the porch and she looks out in the yard waiting for the squirrel to go across. And when the squirrel does, she leaps down. Here's the thing. Her first step off that porch, she's barking. She's so stupid, she doesn't realize, hey, maybe if I didn't bark off my first step, maybe I could get a little closer to the squirrel. Maybe, maybe get close enough to bite it. No, this is what she does. My dog is a total opposite of these dogs. <sighs> Guess that's why we don't have ducks. New Jersey farmer Danielle Wainwright said, I want to make it home safely to my family. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a farmer. Now we had Danielle as a guest on the Shark Farmer Sirius XM show. She farms at a very populated area and as you can imagine, has to deal with a lot of traffic. Most tractors only go like 20 to 25 miles an hour top. It is what it is, they can't go any faster. And of course, this is gonna make some people upset. And unfortunately, sometimes they make very bad decisions. Danielle just wanted to remind people that it's an actual person in the tractor, just doing their job, which consequently is feeding y'all. <laughs> she did find that folks were much nicer and slowed down. Some even waved, and this time with her entire hand, not just one finger. <laughs> After doing just a cross a year ago on Good Friday, Illinois farmer Dave Kessel decided to up his game and add an American flag. Using a field elevator, he made each stripe 28 foot wide. He then folded up the wings to do the stars. The whole thing was 670 foot by 360 foot. Dave marked everything out the day before with flags. Then he used his drone as an eye in the sky. It's a very, very cool idea. And if you've done some field art, We'd love to see it. In his email, Paul Bantle simply said, hit a wet spot. <laughs> that much I gathered, Paul. <laughs> I mean, what were you doing? Were you going duck hunting? Were you trapping gators? Chew them. <laughs> you need some tile in there. It's probably one of those farmable wetlands, which just means you need to paint your risers black. I'm joking. If you're with the NRCS, I'm joking. I mean, it would work, but I'm joking. Kind of joking. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna see from the cab of a tractor, or in this case, a sprayer. I, we've seen bear, uh, we've seen moose, uh, we even saw an airboat up in Saskatchewan. <laughs> now this, this is a power parachute. And I really hope Kyle raises his right boom and gives this guy a high five he'll never forget. <laughs> I actually rode in one of these bad boys once. My brother-in-law, Nesher, had one and he took me up in it. We flew over to my folks' house and we decided we were gonna do a candy drop. So I, I, was supposed to, I was supposed to do a candy drop with those little tiny Tootsie Rolls to all my nephews. But when we left the house, I grabbed the box of the Blow Pops. <laughs> uh, to this day, I can still hear their screams. <laughs> You see, there's an airport like two miles from my house, and it's called the Rickenberger Airport. And I promise you, I promise you've never heard of it. It's literally two grass strips. I don't know what it is. Somebody mows it, and somebody rolls it. They roll it with this ancient roller that I think somebody bought off of Moses, but it's an airport. 
Rinkenburger. You're the one that spelled it wrong. I said Rinkenburger last night. I promise you nobody in the world besides our two neighbors have heard of this. That was Rinkenburger. Rinkenburger. No. Rinkenburger. Thanks for spending some time with us here on Shark Farmer TV. For more stories about people in agriculture, catch my shows on Rural Radio Channel 147 Sirius XM. There's more in-depth discussions on my podcast, and of course, you can check out previous episodes of this show on my YouTube channel. Find out more at sharkfarmer.com.